Good afternoon and welcome, JRPG fans, to your weekly JRPG Fix. It is none other than the JRPG Report. This is going to be episode 89. I'm your host, James Fisher. Thank you so much for tuning in yet again. And we've got a ton of stories to talk about. So let's just dive right into it. Over the past week, we had a um, very interesting announcement. We've been wondering what was going on with Kingdom Hearts 3's downloadable content remind. There hasn't been a whole lot out there. Um, they had that concert a while back and popped up that it was um, coming out soon. Well, soon is going to be on January 23rd of 2020 for PlayStation 4. If you have an Xbox One, you get to wait a little bit longer. It's not until February 25th, Square Enix announced pre-orders are live as of right now. So first, let's get into what it is, and then we'll get into what it costs, and then we'll get into what the uh, what the trailer kind of showed off. So here is an overview. Remind, the other tale that unfolded during the climax of Kingdom Hearts 3. Determined to rescue Kairi, Sora travels to the Keyblade Graveyard a short time before the final battle was to take place. Lacking a Corp- a corporal form, he traces the hearts of the seven guardians of light. Though experiencing their personal battles firsthand, Sor is about to discover truths that he has never before imagined. Um, of course, Kingdom Hearts 3 is available for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One um, already, and this is the much anticipated DLC. So, it is going to cost twenty nine ninety nine. Now, by DLC standards, that's pretty pricey. That's more more along what you would expect to pay for like some of the expansion packs that would come out for for PC games. You know, uh, something that would add a sizable chunk of content to it. Typically, a DLC episode is more in the ten to fifteen dollar range for consoles. So. I'm I'm thinking you're going to get, you're, well, let's put it this way. You're going to be expecting quite a bit for $30. And here's what you get. The additional story, Remind. Limit cut episode and 13 boss battles. Secret episode and boss battle. Data greeting feature. Slideshow feature. And the premium menu, which says to diverse devi- difficulty settings, and gameplay challenges. Now, there's also a, um, let's call it a deluxe version uh, for $39.99, so $10 more, and you get the concert video, which is 19 tracks. This version includes everything in the above version, plus footage of the 19 tracks from the Kingdom Hearts World of Tress Orchestra concert, which was recorded in Osaka, Japan. So, if you are super into that, it's really not a bad deal. I mean, if you're talking like a concert DVD of uh, for ten bucks, that's it's pretty pretty solid. There will also be free DLC. This is version one point zero seven, which offers a main story update, new abilities added, Keyblades, Oathkeeper, and Oblivion, plus new form changes added, in-game requirement in Kingdom Hearts three to acquire Keyblade. And the sharing feature has been expanded. So while that's, uh, you know, a very, uh, it, it certainly says what is in there. It would not be keen arts if you didn't watch the trailer and have more <laughs> questions than answers. So this is said to take place before the final battle. Um, it In the trailer, it shows Kyrie. And even shows, without spoiling too much for you guys, without you need to go watch this trailer. It 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 shows Kyrie fighting, which is pretty awesome. There seems to be some uh, 
dialogue between Riku and Aqua and maybe get to play as her again. Uh, we finally have the return of Final Fantasy characters to Kingdom Hearts. I don't know what kind of role they will be playing. And the only ones we saw were uh, Aerith, Yuffie, and don't call me Squall, I'm Leon. For whatever reason in, in these games. And that's it so far. I can't imagine we don't see uh, remastered Cloud show up at some point in time. That, that just kind of makes sense, don't you think? Uh, they're just not ready to show that yet. But we'll we'll just have to wait and see. So I am definitely... As you all know, Kingdom Hearts 3 left a bitter taste in my mouth. It was fine. I, I didn't love it. That's about all I can say about it. And so there are a lot of people that are going to be very excited about this DLC. I'm... I can't say I'm one of them. And for me, especially at that price point, $30, that's pretty high. Um, I didn't, I, I don't know what I would have paid for this one, but it's not that. And, and I hate to just be a downer when we really don't know anything about it right now. It looks good. Um, Kingdom Hearts is three has always looked good. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, what this actually delivers again, coming out on January 23rd for PS4, Xbox one on February 25th. So are you guys excited about remind? Leave your comments on the Facebook page. I've posted this article. Let me know. Are you yay or nay? Are you kind of like, eh, whatever, what are your feelings as far as what are you going to do with remind? Are you getting it? Are you waiting what's going on in other news um this is not good news for <laughs> anyone i don't believe it's certainly bad news if you are not a playstation 4 owner uh, there is a updated version to the final fantasy 7 remake box art which now sports the fancy little label in the bottom right corner playstation exclusive Play first on PS4, and I believe there's a little trademark symbol beside it, and the asterisk, timed exclusive until 3-3-21. So, yeah, it's not coming to PC or Xbox One. I can't possibly imagine Switch even coming close to being able to handle this game. Or, I guess, Strata, I guess we've got to now include that with uh, it playing FF15. Anyway, it's a PlayStation exclusive for a year. Um, we could very easily be playing episode two on PlayStation four or five before um, the first part comes out for other systems. Um, as a PS4 owner, I'm fine with this. There's as far as like JRPG goes, rarely is there a case where PlayStation is kind of shunned. In the realm, you know, outside of a game series, you know, like Xenoblade or um, those type of Nintendo exclusives, you know, PlayStation rarely gets the shaft. And that is unfortunately because, you know, Square and other Japanese companies support Sony, a Japanese company. It's just not that really difficult to, to figure out. And... So, you know, PlayStation pays for stuff like that. Xbox pays for exclusivities, you know, stuff like Minecraft. Um, Just, you know, popping in my head first. That's just the nature of business. So, hate to be the bearer of bad news if you were holding out um, for good news as far as that goes. You might want to pony up and get a... And and, and by that point, you know, you, you can get a PS4 pretty cheap now. We're, with PS5 coming out in 2020, it's uh, been a pretty decent time to get get one. Those were the two big stories. Um, there are plenty of other things to talk about. We did get some more Persona 5 uh, 
the fan, scramble the Phantom Strikers news as we got the new trailer for Fox. Uh, Yusuke's action-packed trailer broke out. Uh, of course, we've already got the trailers for On, Morgana, Ryuji, Sophia, and Joker. We got some other news as well for Persona 5 Strikers. I, Striker, scramble the Phantom Strikers. I don't know if I'm ever going to get that title correct. I keep wanting to call it just Persona 5 Strikers. Uh, Alice debuted new gameplay footage of the game during the latest Dengeki PlayStation live stream. The footage showcases the... Uh, sh- <laughs> I'm so bad with these names. Shibuya and Sendai Jails playing as protagonists Sophia, Ryuji, um, Sakamoto, and Morgana and Yusuke. So there is a... I've got the link for this story as well as every story that I talk about. There is the link over on the Facebook page. So if you would like to check it out, you can. It's kind of kind of cool that we've got a uh, jail gameplay in uh in scramble that's gonna the game just looks like so much fun i cannot wait well we're gonna have to wait <laughs> a long time before we get our hands on that one a uh, game you can play right now if you would like to start ocean first departure r is available on ps4 and switch at the moment they had their launch trailer of course uh Launched today on PS4 on the PlayStation Store and Switch on the eShop. It is going for twenty ninety nine. Um, it has full voiceovers. You, players can choose between the original full voice cast from the PSP system version of the game in either Japanese or English, or the newly recorded version featuring Japanese voice cast from the original Super Famicom version, which released in Japan only. You can have, they have the new character illustrations. Players can opt for the original character illustrations from Star Ocean First Departure or brand new versions drawn by famous illustrator uh, Katsumi and Inami from Star Ocean The Last Hope. There is a speed mode. Players can traverse the world can traverse the world more swiftly. Adjust the game balance. You can uh, adjust battle difficulty. To enable players to experience more challenges in combat. That speed mode looks pretty vital. As uh, I was watching some early gameplay of the video of people walking around. And it is... They weren't moving quickly. <laughs> it was it was pretty slow. So that's, that's something that's going to be greatly appreciated. I do believe. I believe we talked about this last week, but uh, Bandai Namco released version 2.20 update to God Eater 3, adding the Lulu and Ricardo chapters to Traversing the Past episode, New Game Plus, Jukebox features, and more. So that uh, that update is live. There are, of course, various bug fixes and, and the such, but it is all out there for you guys to enjoy. Uh, I don't know what's going on with these trailers for Trials of Mana, but we have a new one. Remember, it, we've got individual trailers for everybody. Those have popped up in the past couple weeks. The game doesn't come out till April, and now we've got what they're calling the first in a series of three trailers spotlighting the main characters. Okay, we got that. The first trailer focuses on Duran and Angela. So now they are, these are kind of together. And I mean, I love what I'm seeing out of this game. I really do. I guess I just, I'm not quite sure what they're doing with these, with all these trailers. So here is the overview and how they are linked. Duran is a swordsman from the kingdom of Valencia. Those impressive muscles aren't just for show. Despite his young age, he's respected as one of the strongest warriors around. A worthy heir to his departed father, Loki. But one fateful day, Valencia's castle is attacked. Rushing to its defense, he confronts the Crimson Wizard. But for all of his strength, he is powerless against the malevolent, malevolent magician. After recovering from his wounds, he vows to become stronger and sets off on a journey to confront the villain. 
Actually, this is this is pretty long. <laughs> so sit back. Uh, Angela's story is very different. She is not initially powerfully skilled. Quite the opposite. She's the only daughter of the true queen of Altina, the snow-covered kingdom of magicians. Just on a side note, it's a snow-covered kingdom. And uh, Angela doesn't wear a lot of clothing <laughs> in any of these things. It makes zero sense. Anyway, unfortunately... Angela struggles to cast spells, something that makes her a source of constant shame for her mother, the true queen. But when the true queen and her right-hand man, the Crimson Wizard, try to force Angela to sacrifice herself to activate the energy in the Mana Stone, her power emerges. So we have two very different characters, bond together by, by malevolent... I'm not sure what that word says. Malevolent intentions, let's just say that, of the Crimson Wizard. Well, maybe... One of the fascinating things about Trials of Mana is that you get to choose which characters take center stage in the story. You pick three heroes from a group of six main characters. And the story you experience unfolds differently depending on who you go with. So it's entirely possible in your playthrough, Angela doesn't join forces with Durham. Perhaps she meets the feral Kevin or the quick-witted Hawkeye. Or maybe she comes, teams up with the noble Amazonian Riaz or precious Charlotte. It's entirely up to you okay well cool thank you square i as i've never played the game before i did not know that so you got six characters you choose three of them and you get that unique story well i think i'm looking forward to it even more now it's going to be interesting to see who i choose who are you going to choose which one of those six characters do you think uh you'll go with Leave a comment on the uh, story thread, and maybe we can talk about it next show. Uh, remember, we got the release date for Langrisser 1 and 2 last week. It's coming out on PS4, Switch, and PC via Steam on March 10th in North America, March 13th in Europe. And now there is a story trailer to go along with that. There's a... Uh, New key features of the game, a blade honed to perfection. Experience two classic titles with new art, music, and presentation. Perfectly re tuned gameplay for a modern strategy RPG feel. Two legendary swords, two legendary tales brought back to life with new localizations and a new character. So if you're interested in this one, you want to check out the trailer, head over to the Facebook page and you can... Certainly do that. Speaking of new trailers, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, hashtag FE Encore, World and Battle Overview Trailers came out. This is a, this is a game I'm definitely looking forward to. I don't know if I'm going to get it when it first pops up. In fact, I probably won't as it's coming out on Switch on January 17th. But it's something I'm certainly interested in. Um, the Nintendo of Europe Twitter account also posted a few second long video gameplay showcasing the Officers Academy outfit from Fire Emblem Three Houses, Tiki, Mako, and Barry in chainable sessions attacks, and quick sessions for faster battles. Here's an overview of the game. The worlds of Fire Emblem and Atlas games have crossed paths again, and the result is coming to the Nintendo Switch system. An interdimensional evil has invaded modern-day Tokyo, resulting in this fantastical barrage of music, style, and yes, danger. So fight back. Bow through dungeons to pump up your strategy and creative decimate your foes before all hope fades to black. You is the rising and the rising stars you call friends will need to call on your own creative power manifested as iconic Fire Emblem characters to wage a secret war on rogue spirits that feed on creativity. Each encounter will immerse you in a deep turn-based battle that blend the combat of Fire Emblem and Shin Megami Tensei series into one brittle harmony. Fuse items to craft weaponry and then play to your strengths and crush your foes. Around every corner, you'll find nods to multiple fandoms, including Fire Emblem references, Dungeons themed to the entertainment industry and stunning musical performances. So yeah, this one's coming out on January 17th. This is probably a game I will try to catch on sale at some point in time down the road. But 
was a game I remember when it came out. I was interested in it. I still am. But kind of just as an overall theme, I kind of made this point when I shared this Star Ocean story the other day to a couple of people who were all looking forward to it. And I believe some of uh, maybe Dalton was already playing it and enjoying it quite a lot. I think I've finally, after all these years of, of buying games and and doing this, and of course, this is not a concrete rule. If a game goes on crazy sale, well, you got to buy when the iron you know, strike when the iron's hot, right? I think I've come to the point where no matter how much I'm looking forward to a game, um, if it comes out and I'm not going to either pick it up or you know have it delivered to the <laughs> delivered to the house. Or download it and play it that day. I'm going to pass. Doesn't mean I'm not going to pick it up down the road. But, you know, buying a game just to put it in the backlog to play later seems a little bit silly. And, of course, holidays and birthdays and gifts. thats That doesn't really work. But I think, you know, that was the first time I've made that constant decision. Like, no matter how much I'm looking forward to and want to play this game, I'm just going to wait and it's going to be cheaper than it is the day that it comes out. It's that's just the way things work. And when I'm ready to play the game or it comes up on a flash sale or the I mean, you go on the PlayStation store, there's literally a sale going on every week. So uh outside of a handful of titles, you know, your Trails of Cold Steel, your Dragon Quest, your Personas, your Final Fantasy VII remasters. Those are all day one purchases, and that's non-negotiable. Outside of those, I think I'm just going to... I think I'm finally going to wait and um, save myself a little bit of money because as it is for everybody, money's a little tight. Anyway, that's my rant for the week. And uh, being a cheapskate, it's not easy, but I'd try to do it well. Let's take a quick break here on the JRPG Report. Let you guys and myself catch our breaths and have a quick word from our sponsor. We'll be right back. All right, everyone, let's keep things rolling right along. And let's quickly update everybody on the contest. Remember, if you sign up for listener support between now and the end of the year, that's a couple more weeks, you'll be entered to win that Final Fantasy VII Remaster Special Edition, an $80 value. Right now, we've still got three entries in that contest. Jordan, Dalton, and Andre, you are in it to win it. That means I need two more people to sign up for listener support to now in the year to make that contest live. And I did have a thought that, you know, perhaps you've already paid for your copy of the game coming out. Maybe you don't want to play it. Maybe you want something else. So do you want Persona 5 Royal Special Edition? Do you want a Amazon gift card for $80? I don't care. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. So if that is something that has been holding you back out of the contest, I want to make this thing live and I want somebody to win. So uh, if you so go ahead and sign up and if you win, if you want something else, that's fine. That's fine. I'd give you 80, 80 bucks cash if, if I knew I'd see you. So <laughs> it does not matter to me. I just, I, I think this is a very exciting thing. Um, obviously you're also supporting the podcast and uh, this effort to reach you guys each and every week. It doesn't, uh, doesn't pay very much, maybe like a couple cents per episode through, uh, through you listen to that ad, but I want to do something to give back to all you awesome listeners. So two more of you guys sign up so we can make this happen and you get your choice of whatever awesome prize you want. If you don't want FF7 remastered, it's fine. Don't matter to me. Uh, got some quick stories to talk about. Um, there was a new developer diary for Monster Hunter World Iceborne expansion. This is a developer diary. 4.5, and it details new monster, oh my, Zenojiva, mature form. You can start the Beast Slaying December 13th. 
this is version 12.01 update. Um, so yeah, if you want to check that out, head on over to the Facebook page and you can see the link to that story. Um, a game I am looking forward to, I haven't played any of these games, but I'm looking forward to Sword Art Online Alitization Lyceris, and because it will launch on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC on May 21st, 2020 in Japan, and come out the next day, May 22nd, in the Americas, in Europe, publisher Bandai Namco and developer Aquira, AQ. U R I A announced. There will be a. This may be a Japan only uh, limited edition. We'll have to see what comes. Let's just say what it what it has going for it right now. There's a standard edition and a PlayStation Four only first print limited edition. Costs about thirty five hundred yen more. A digital only deluxe edition will cost a thousand yen more than that. Uh, the first print limited edition includes a limited edition box with special illustration, special content Blu-ray disc, original con- soundtrack CD, original drama CD, special case for the CDs and Blu-ray discs, data or drama CD script, limited edition packaging, and special booklet. Oh, that's a lot of stuff going on. So yeah, we finally got a release date for that. This is is overview of the game. Your journey is ready to begin. For the first time ever, players can experience Sword Art Arlon's anime storyline in game format with Alicization Lysers. Play as the protagonist Kirito and immerse yourself in the underworld, a mysterious virtual world set in the anime's Alicization arc. Featuring intense battle action, stunning JRPG visuals, and expansive World Free Explorer, journey through your latest VR MMO Sword Art Online game is ready to begin. Key features include the Lazarus Flower. Lazarus is a species of flower found in the south of Japan, which symbolizes passion, sad memories, reunion, and self-reliance. Experience these themes as you dive into the game's storyline. It says it is faithful to the original work. Kirito has awoken in a mysterious yet somehow familiar virtual world where AIs behave like humans. In this world, Kirito meets a young man named Iugo. They make a promise where their destinies will soon become entwined. To keep that promise and stay together, they must venture onwards. Meet your favorite characters. Relive the story of House Station with your favorite characters, such as Kirito. Here we go, Alice, Administrator, and many more. There's a new trailer with gameplay footage as well in both English and Japanese. I believe the gameplay one is more in Japanese. It just looks like a fun game. Like I said, I've not played these games before, but from what I've seen in um, from the videos, it looks pretty cool. looks like a lot of fun. Uh, remember we talked about... Trails of Cold Steel 3 getting a Switch release. Well, it now has a release date of March 19th, 2020 in Japan for nearly 7,000 yen. Publisher Nippon Ichi Software announced in the latest issue of Weekly Mamitsu. In North America and Europe, NAS America released the Switch version in spring 2020. The Switch version will include a high-speed skip mode and much of the game's downloadable content, as well as every casual outfit set, each character's bathing suit, and the headgear set. So, got a Japan release date, and spring in the West, I'm guessing you're probably looking at late April, maybe May, as far as that goes. Got some new characters to be announced for the fairy tale JRPG coming out. They are, and again, as always, forgive me for my pronunciation on these. You've got Jello Fernandez, Laxus Dreyer, 
and Mira Jane Strauss. They will be playable characters in Fairy Tale, the latest weekly of Weekly Famitsu reveals. Mira Jane can also transform into Citri in battle. By meeting certain requirements as you play the game, certain conversations between characters will occur. There will be many comical moments that you will only be able to see in the game. Fairy Tale is due out for due out on March 19th, 2020 for PC via Steam Worldwide, PlayStation 4 and Switch in Europe and Japan, and PlayStation 4 and Switch on March 20th in North America. See, there was also some other characters. Yeah, there's more characters. Uh, We've got... Well, no, there's not. There's just the three of them, and they had plenty of images to go along with them. I like like Mary Jane. She looks like a a barmaid. Anytime the image goes along with she's got uh, some steins of uh, your favorite frosty beverage in there. See, this details the... And like I talked about, the commu- that's a communication feature that you can get and learn more about the story. So there is a, that was kind of the, you know, quick notes version of it. I've also got a link on a much more detailed version of all that that I just talked about via the Facebook page. Kind of an odd announcement, I guess. Uh, the Last Remnant Remastered is now available for smartphones. This, uh, I don't think this was expected at all. You can get it via the iOS uh, App Store or Android Google Play for nineteen ninety nine. First came out back in 2008 for the Xbox 360. The PlayStation 4 version came out a year ago. The Switch version came out in June. So if you didn't get to play it on any of those platforms and want to play it now on your smartphone you can do that we got a bevy of information about death end request including a trio of videos talking about gameplay dialogue and battle the dialogue scene includes rot mia and liliana according to compile heart death end request 2 will have many heartwarming scenes where the game's cast of girls get along with each other flirt and so on the second video is another dialogue scene, but this time featuring uh, Sheena, the protagonist of the original game, and Maya, the protagonist of this part two. The sequel will feature other returning characters, such as Sheena. The third video showcases the battle system. So if you are looking forward to that one, this game is due out February 13th in Japan. Still no news on a Western release as of yet. And not to be outdone, they also released the debut trailer for Death End Request 2. You can find the links for both of these on the Facebook page. Uh, For the first time um, ever in Persona history, Persona 5 Royal will be available fully subtitled in English, French, Italian, German, and, and Spanish when it comes out on March the 31st. 2020 in America and Europe's not much more to say about that other than it's very cool. Um, the more people that can access this game and this series, the better. Yeez, Yeez 4? Is that what this was? Yeah, Yeez 4, Memories of Calcutta is coming west for PS4 in spring 2020. The Western release will include dual audio in English and Japanese. XT Games will release the PlayStation 4 version of Yee's Memories of Helsetta in North America, Europe, and Australia in spring 2020. Publishers XT Games and Marvelous Europe announced. The PlayStation 4 remaster supports 60 frames per second and full high definition graphics, as well as optimized controls to reproduce touchscreen features of the PS Vita version. It will also support dual audio, allowing the game to be played with English voices or the original Japanese. The PC version will receive dual audio support as well as a free patch in the near future. In North America, Physical Day 1 Timeless Adventure Edition 
will be available for $39.99 at the XSEED Game Store and other participating retailers. And will be the only version available at retail at launch. It includes a copy of the game, special soundtrack CD that was part of the E's 25th anniversary pack in Japan, containing nine rearranged songs from E's 1 through 7 and E's Origin, along with another five songs from the original MSX release, as well as 12 4x6 inch art cards highlighting various E's heroines. The digital edition of the game will be available for only $29.99. In Europe, the physical edition of Yee's Memories of Salcedo will be available at select retailers. Pre-order and pricing available for both physical and digital editions will be confirmed closer to release date. There is a Western announcement trailer to go along with this one. Looks like a lot of fun. Um... You know, the Yee series is something, as a, uh, just a series I never got into, and maybe one day it is one that I can. But announcements like this is, they are certainly welcome and, and a good thing. And I know there's a lot of people that will be excited to hear about that. Um, This is kind of just a cool announcement. I don't know how many JRPGs are included in this one. There's not a whole lot that, that uh, stick out to me, but there are, this is actually going on tonight. The game awards are going on uh, December 12th. Um, they will be live broadcast at five thirty Pacific and eight thirty Eastern standard time on YouTube, Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, Twitter, and other various Platforms. That's not what I want to talk about. They are doing what is called the Game Festival, a digital consumer event hosted on Steam that brings hands-on gameplay demos to users around the world. It will feature more than a dozen first look game demos for a limited 48-hour window before they're removed from Steam. This event will start tonight, December 12th, or today, actually, uh, right now. It is going on. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 a.m. Eastern, until December 14th at the same time. So hopefully you're listening to this on December the 12th. You'll have two days to log in and do this. And uh, Jeff Knightley, or Keely, how does he say his last name? I can't, I can't remember. Keeley or Knightley? Knightley? I think it's Keeley. He says, six years ago, I bet everything I had to create the Game Awards as a way to celebrate our passion for gaming. Now feels right. Now feels like the right time to take the next step with the Game Festival, a completely digital approach to the consumer space event. Let's face it, not everyone can attend a physical trade show or consumer event. The Game Festival is designed is designed from the ground up as an event without barriers. Extend the benefits of a physical event to the global gaming community that watches the Game Awards. Here are some well, it looks like all of them. Of the 12 plus, okay, some of the 12 plus games that were released free limited demos on Steam for the Game Festival Acid Knife, Charon, Carry On, C A R R I O N, uh, Kikery, C H I C O R Y, The Drifter, Eastward, Haven, and that's the one that I. That popped up, and that's kind of why we're covering this one, because that one looks really cool um, with JRPG elements from the Game Bakers. Heavenly Bodies, Moving Out, Roki, Skatebird, Spirit Fair, System Shock, and Wooden Nickel. So I think that's a really cool thing. Um, yeah, most of us are never going to be able to go to something like E3 or um, Tokyo Game Show or anything else. So this is a really, um, really cool thing that they are, that they're putting out there for people. So if you've got, uh, got your steam account loaded up and you want to check some of these out, you can do it right now. Um, finally we had some sad news. There's usually a delay of some sorts that goes on and, um, uh, this is no different. This is Square Enix, and they are delaying 
Final Fantasy Chron- Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition from its previously announced January 23rd, 2020 release date, just until summer. And maybe you're like me, your first thing that pops in your mind is, how do you need an extra six months to work on a GameCube remaster? And I think... I would have to imagine it's more the connectivity of this game. Remember, you 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 do really need to have four players to play this one at all times. So maybe it's a networking type of deal. Switch, you know, it has it has maybe some problems that they've got to work out. Anyway, here is a message from Square Enix regarding the delay. Since announcing the game, we've read so many positive messages filled with encouragement. And all of us on the team would like to thank you for the support we've shown so far. We'd like to thank you by delaying this game for six months. No, that's not in there. Today we're announcing that the release date for the game is being moved to summer 2020. We made the decision to adjust the release date to allow the development time more extra time to make final adjustments to the game to make this the best experience possible. We know you've been waiting patiently for the game and we'll hope you continue to support us as you've done so far over the coming months through to lunch. Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remaster is coming to PS4, Switch, iOS, and Android. You'll be able to play online with your friends and transfer your save file across all four platforms when the game launches. So, yeah, okay, that's probably that's probably more of what it is. You're trying to get PS4, Nintendo, Switch, iOS, and Android all to play along nicely. And maybe that's what's kind of holding it up. I never got a chance to play this on GameCube. Um, was it, this was the one that you had to have like four Game Boy Advances to play it on or something crazy like that. Or you could, if you didn't have four controllers. Um, I never played it. It had some weird mechanics to it, but it looks like it was a lot of fun. And um, maybe one day it'd be something that I'll go and check out. Anyway, that's going to wrap up episode 99. We appreciate you guys so much for listening to this each and every week. Uh, of course, we've got Christmas coming up soon, so uh, I think next week is fine. Um, we should have a normal uh, every week podcast, no problem. Christmas the next week will fall on Wednesday. Um, my daughter's birthday is the day after Christmas. I think I've said this before. So that whole week looks like it's going to be kind of up in the air. Um, I may just try to record a, a Sunday special and put it out that week like normal. I don't like to miss weeks with you guys. So if you don't get nothing the week of Christmas, sorry. You know, family comes first. That's just the way it is. But uh, we'll catch everything back up. The following week, you know we will. Uh, Don't forget, give us a like on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. um, Leave us a review. Um, That certainly always helps us out. Whatever platform you listen to us on, give us a good review. And that can only bump things up and make more fellow JRPG listeners like yourself be able to find our little podcast. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you next time. Don't forget, get back out there and level up.